This video is sponsored by Rad Power Bikes, Rad Wagon 4. It makes me laugh every year when Apple says, this is the fastest iPhone we've ever made. It should be expected that the current gen phone is going to be the fastest. But is the iPhone 12 the best phone that Apple's made? Well, it checks off the newest box, but there's a lot of things that it brings to the table that are small and perhaps unnoticed. And design aside, the phone is not that different, at least on paper, to what came before it. So as you look to decide whether or not you should get an iPhone 12 or upgrade from what you have, it can be confusing at times. Is the iPhone 12 worth it from the iPhone 11 or is it worth skipping altogether? So looking at the iPhone 12 and holding it in your mitts, like it's a new looking iPhone and that is not something that we get every year. So it's a check mark for like the newness department. It harkens back to what I consider to be kind of the golden age of, of iPhone design, the iPhone 4 and iPhone 5. And whether or not you feel that this design is perfect or Apple just getting lazy going back to their old design, probably is the answer of whether or not you are an iPhone fan uh, at all. I'm in the camp of I really appreciate what Apple's done. I like the squared off edges. It feels really good in the hands. It's fully aluminum on the side and unlike the stainless steel on the 12 Pro, you're not gonna get fingerprints on that banding. So that's sort of an awesome thing to have. What's jarring about holding this phone though is how light it feels. It's got a 28, 15 milliamp hour battery in it. So it's not giant, it's not small, but the phone just like feels like the battery is not in it. And I've been using the phone now for about two weeks. Uh, and I'm still not used to the lightness of the phone, but I guess it can be nice. You're not really aware of it when it's in your pocket. So the phone also does 5G and with that millimeter wave flavor of 5G, there's a little sort of window on the right side for that to work. Every fiber of my tech reviewing body is screaming that it's a fingerprint reader. Cause that's pretty much what every side mounted fingerprint reader has looked like over the years. It doesn't take away from the aesthetic at all, but I, I'm having a hard time rectifying in my head that it's not a fingerprint reader. That's the design this year. You might love it, you might not. It definitely feels different. And I think it feels really good in the hand. But what is a huge difference from last year is screen. So first it's bigger. Uh, it's up to 6.1 inches from 5.8. But if there was one knock on like the iPhone 11, it was the display. Uh, it was LCD and it was a good LCD display, but it certainly wasn't great. And in the era of kind of everything going, just OLED, all the things, it was kind of a glaring thing to be missing. Apple has rectified that with the iPhone 12. In fact, the 6.1 inch screen on the 12 is the exact same display that is on its much more expensive big brother, the iPhone 12 Pro. So you're making no compromises in the Apple world. Uh, when it comes to the display, it's plenty bright. It can get a max brightness of 1200 nits. Black levels look black, colors look bright. HDR content looks awesome on it. It is a really good display, uh, but it's missing 120 Hertz. It's still the same 60 Hertz that we've seen on every other iPhone to date. Now it is the lesser expensive iPhone. So perhaps it could be forgivable to not have it on the 12 if it was on the 12 Pro, but it's not on either of these. If you're coming from any other iPhone, you will notice no difference whatsoever with the refresh rate, but you will notice that this screen is brighter and more vibrant than any other iPhone screen that you've used. So that screen is really nice, but it's better protected this year. There's a ceramic shield material on it that supposedly makes it four times better at drop protection. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote Zach from Jerry Rig Everything, glass is glass and glass is going to break, but now you'll have a four times less chance of it breaking. One issue to be aware of though is scratches. Uh, there is no indication that the ceramic coating is going to make it really any better at scratches. Now, in all fairness, my screen on my iPhone 12, it's come in and out of my pocket and been on tables, does not have any micro scratches on it at all. It looks brand new, especially if I wipe it down. Uh, but another guy in our studio, JD, his iPhone 12 has a ton of micro scratches on it. I mean, very, very visible. And according to him, he never put it down on anything rough and is unsure where they came from. 
So perhaps you're gonna be somewhere in between, but at least don't assume that the ceramic coating is going to make it scratch proof. It's just gonna help with the drops. So I don't know where you fall on the 120 Hertz debate. To me, it is a very big omission. It's not going to take away from my enjoyment of the iPhone 12, something I'm definitely aware of as I'm using it, sort of making me keep an eye on what might come next with the iPhone 13, hopefully bringing that to the table. Uh, but the design and going from LCD to OLED are giant improvements. And these aren't the things that we generally see year over year. So it's a question of like, what kind of human are you? Uh, are you the kind of person that wants to wait until there's that absolute killer feature you must have? Then perhaps you wanna wait for the 13. But if you're the type of person, and quite frankly, I am that person, that likes to upgrade for, for newness sake and for design change and the best display that Apple's ever put on an iPhone, then the iPhone 12 is going to be a very welcome uh, upgrade for you. So I've been riding electric bikes for about two years. In particular, I've been riding uh, Rad Power Bikes. So meet the Rad Wagon 4. Uh, and this beauty is good for hauling you know, kids around, obviously, that's why I was excited about it. Uh, but I've got in the back a caboose, that gives you the extra seats, but you can put cargo back there. Probably the most amazing electric bike that I've ever ridden for families and moving things. Range has never been an issue. It's got a range of between 25 and 45 miles per charge, depending on how fast you wanna go. Uh, it's got a total payload of 350 pounds. So my two you know, 40 pound kids in the back, plus me, even though I put some on in the middle, doesn't come close to, to hitting that. We've got integrated headlight with tail light and brake light functionality. I've got a half twist throttle, an intelligent five level pedal assist. And this is probably my favorite part. So you can ride it like a regular bike. You could turn off all the electric stuff and just pedal through it. It's gonna be heavy and you'll get a workout. But if you turn on sort of the battery and start using the electric part of it, a couple cool things. It'll assist you as you pedal and you've got different modes you can go up to to sort of get more assistance. So like one pedal will propel you forward, but you can also kind of use it like a moped. It's got a little twist throttle. You can just twist it and you can go, which is, I'm not gonna lie, my preferred method for going long distance. If you wanna learn more about Rad Power Bikes in general, or you wanna check out the Rad Wagon for yourself, which you probably should, I'll link to it down below. All right, it's camera time. This is like the generally like the meat of a phone review, the, the juicy, Park, that's what separates phones. Uh, the iPhone 12, if you didn't know, uh, launched with the iPhone 12 Pro. The wide and the ultra wide that's on that iPhone 12 Pro are the exact same that are on the iPhone 12. Uh, but here's what the iPhone 12 camera like, boils down to. So surprise, the pictures all look really good. Uh, there's not much of a discernible difference as you can see between shots taken on the 11 and the 12. But if you do want to sort of pick out what the difference is, there's definitely a bit more sharpness on the iPhone 12 side. Maybe it's not something you'll notice all the time, but if you want to really sort of do a lot of zooming in, you can see the pictures are definitely sharper uh, on the 12. Where you will see a difference with the cameras though is on the, like, the definitely on the extreme. So on the low light side, you will see a much better low light shots with the iPhone 12. Uh, on the other side, if you are for some reason wanted to shoot into like direct sunlight, those pictures will look less blown out. Certainly not great. Photos aside, like one area where you will see I think the biggest, most drastic improvements uh, in camera quality from the 11 to the 12 is in video. So it can record 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR, and that might not mean much to you, uh, but if you are a video creator, it should mean everything. First of all, the fact that your phone can do that uh, is like borderline wizardry. But here the problem is that the workflow of being able to do anything amazing with HDR footage on anything but an iPhone is a little bit like broken right now. Being able to record a 10-bit makes the iPhone 12 a camera that creators can use more easily for B-roll, for A-roll, having more control over the colors in post-production is a giant thing. It's different from going from 16 million colors to billions. Having that ability is drastic and huge. And the fact that it is on an iPhone uh, is awesome. We were waiting for some cameras that came out in 20 
2020 to get 10 bit. The fact that it is on iPhone 12 uh, is staggering. And if you are a creator, perhaps a big enough reason to consider upgrading to the iPhone 12. So like, I, I guess with camera stuff, I kind of start to find the iPhone 12 to be a bit confusing. I think Apple's positioning the iPhone 12 as the phone for everyone, but the features might not be for everyone. If you're not taking pictures in like those insane extreme examples, you're gonna be hard pressed again to see much of a difference. The iPhone 11 already took advantage of deep fusion. On the iPhone 12, obviously you have that here, but you've got deep fusion on all the cameras, front and the two on the rear. But I don't know how often that's going to be of use to people. The sharpness is certainly better, the HDR is, is improved, but the actual photo fidelity themselves, the difference is not giant. And again, it harkens back, I think, to the video question. If you plan on using your phone as a video camera to create stuff, that alone, aside from the upgrade from the LCD to OLED panel, is probably the single biggest reason to want to get an iPhone 12, and I can't overstate that enough. 10-bit is something that means something to you, then you should already be looking to purchase an iPhone 12, even just as a camera. Uh, if it doesn't mean anything to you and you just like to shoot video of general stuff while you're out, then perhaps you should stick with what you have or look for now a less expensive iPhone 11. I always find performance sections, and I do them in all my videos, borderline like silly. Uh, the A14 is here, it's a beast. No matter what you do, whether you benchmark it or you like to give your real world experiences, uh, it's stupid fast. And user experience with Apple has been what matters, not sort of raw specs. But if raw specs what you care about, you can benchmark the A14 and see that it wipes the floor at the competition. The argument people like to make is the phone only has four gigabytes of RAM, and that's true. Uh, but the user experience is there is no stutter, no slowdown, multitasking, launching games, apps, all that stuff happens crazy fast. And I've really not been able to see any discernible difference between the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro that has two gigabytes more of RAM. And, and maybe in a year, two years, three years, if you're still holding onto these phones, you'll see that difference. It's a beast, it's fast. No matter what you do, no matter what you throw at it, you're not gonna have any staggers, slowdown, hiccups. I mean, it's just, it's fast. That's a performance of the iPhone. That's a performance of having Apple's latest silicon. Some version of the A14 chip that's in the iPhone 12 is gonna make its way into MacBooks and MacBook Pros and iMacs and rumored even to make its way into a Mac Pro. It's fast. If it's good enough for a desktop in a tweaked form, it is definitely fast enough to handle, you know, my YouTubes and Twitters and my multitasking stuff that I'm, that I'm doing on my phone. So while the phone is very fast, usually more performance means worse battery life. Uh, and the iPhone 12 has a significantly smaller battery than the iPhone 11 has. And that appears to be a recipe for really abysmal battery life, but that has not been my experience. Now this is by no means like a battery king. Uh, you can look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max for that, or the iPhone 11 Pro Max, those phones that have the biggest battery but my actual usage, how I use my phone throughout the day, and you can see it here. Uh, I had four hours of screen on time by the end of my day with about 38% battery life left. I could have probably gotten six or seven hours of screen on time if I pushed it. For me, a phone has to just last a day. That's coming off the charger, usually most mornings around 6.30 and going back on uh, around 11. If it can do that, that's all I need without having to worry about getting to a charger midway through the day. So it is definitely a day phone. The phone also has 5G and that's more of a future proof play for Apple. 5G networks, depending on where you live and what carrier, um, are not quite as full fleshed out as they're going to be obviously in a few years, but it is nice to have. I think a phone that needs to be future proof right now has to have 5G. And I like that the iPhone supports, at least in the US, all variants of 5G on every single carrier. So that's nice. My experience with 5G will be vastly different than yours, but usually I'm getting speeds that are around between 80 and 100 down on a good 5G connection. All right, so it's conclusion time. I said at the beginning, is the iPhone 12 a worthy upgrade to the iPhone 11? And almost every new iPhone that comes out, I say if you've got the last gen, skip the new one, you, you don't need it. 
I think the iPhone 12 brings so many new things to the table that if you've got an iPhone 11, it's actually worthwhile making the upgrade. And I can only speak to my experience and my needs, but I like the best screens I can have. And I still have a hard time getting over 120 Hertz, but the jump from LCD to OLED is very tangible. The display is how you interact with everything on the phone. And I can see that difference. On the camera side, having 10 bit on video is huge and can make sort of the iPhone be a, a B cam for what we do. It's just that good and makes it more usable to me. And you couple in 5G and a new design, MagSafe functionality that the phones have now, uh, and it's a much better package and a more compelling option than the iPhone 11 ever was. If you don't care about screen and you don't care about recording video, then the iPhone 11 is still a great phone and a great choice. But for my 800 plus dollars, I'll put it towards the iPhone 12.